Everyone, thank you for joining us for today's workshop with Nairobi Garage. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here today and we appreciate you taking your time to engage with us in this forum. My name is Bridget. I'm the community manager at Nairobi Garage Westlands branch. Uh, for those that may not be familiar with Nairobi Garage, allow me to do a brief introduction. Nairobi Garage is Africa's biggest, largest and coolest uh, business and innovation workspace um, and co-working community. The flexible workspaces at Nairobi Garage give your business space to grow and get connected to the large networks of similar minded professionals to increase your impact and skill. Our spaces offer a variety of amenities, fully furnished office spaces, uh, breakout spaces, reliable internet and bottomless tea and coffee uh, to keep you alert as you work. We offer a virtual network of a thousand plus entrepreneurs and professionals, home to over 150 growth for us innovative businesses, weekly events for members and wider business community. For central location, we have four locations currently up and running, Kilimani, Karen, Spring Valley, and now Westlands. Uh, we believe that co-working drives innovation because whenever people share physical spaces, they are able to collaborate to create things that wouldn't have on their own. We host workshops every Tuesday to expose members to larger business communities and explore areas of interest to entrepreneurs within our ecosystem. In this week's workshops, we are delighted to have Francis Waitaka. Thank you, Francis, for having us. Today, he will take us through a session on how to create brilliant online ads to drive sales. I will uh, roll it over to Francis from now on. Thank you. Karibuni um, sana everyone. I'm very happy today to uh, have you guys and thank you Nairobi Garage for giving me the opportunity to share uh, today's session. So my name is Francis Waidaka. I'll be taking you through um, what I have learned as a digital marketer for the last 10 years. I've worked with small and medium-sized enterprises in Kenya and I've gained a lot of experience, uh, you know, doing online ads, creating online presence, uh, building websites, managing digital uh, marketing uh, campaigns. And today's session, I'll be sharing you what I have learned uh, through this experience. And the big idea here is what can we do as business owners, as marketing professionals, as founders, as entrepreneurs, as salespeople, as comms uh, people that can help us to boost our online presence so that we can convert more customers on online. So I'm gonna take you through an interactive session. I, um, I don't want to talk a lot about me because when they send the communications about uh, this event, you've been reading more about me uh, on LinkedIn and on social media. But generally, I have 21 years experience as a, uh, in technology and digital media. I've worked with more than 100 companies in East Africa. Uh, I've also had the privilege of being voted as one of the uh, leading uh, uh, men in Kenya in digital. Also, I'm the team leader at Digital for Africa. So I want to start this conversation by asking a question um, that I keep getting this question uh, everywhere I go from business owners, uh, for, from marketing professionals. And they ask me, you know, uh, why is it that I keep promoting uh, my products online, but uh, I don't get customers converting? So. And I want to ask this question to us. I want to hear from you. What has been your experience running online ads or 
or if you have a Facebook page, you have an Instagram account, you have uh, a website, or you have an e-commerce platform, or you have a YouTube channel, or you have a LinkedIn profile, how has it been in terms of uh, using that channel to get customers? How has been your experience? And I want to read some of the chats that uh, you guys will be sending. And I can see we have been joined by more than uh, 32 people. I can see Perez, I can see Sharon, uh, Mel, Seneca, I can see you. Simon, Aska, Simon, Simon, Aska, I can see you. Barbara, Wino, I can see you. And I want to hear your experience. How has been your experience running ads online? Catherine Kamau, I can see you. Sabiha Jaffa, who is my current student in our digital marketing masterclass. Karibu Sana, I can see you. Catherine Kamau, I can see you. Maureen Karubu, I can see you. I want to hear your experience. What are your experience? Go there and chat with me because after this session, Digital for Africa is offering uh, a free audit of your online presence, your social media. If you have ads, we will audit. Um, if you have a, a website, we will give you an audit report for one person who will be the most active in this session. So I don't want people who are passive. I don't want you to just lay uh, in the back and just listen or just watch what is happening. I want you to engage me. I want uh, to hear from you. What is your feedback? How has been your experience? You know, have, are you getting customers online? And, uh, you know, are you converting customers online? Are they paying when you tell them to pay for your services? I can see Nadia Hamisi, one of my students, uh, former students at uh, ADMI. I can see Michael Kiai, Natasha Kigame, I can see you. Um, I have seen, um, I've seen quite a number of people, but I haven't seen a question. I want to, I want to hear your feedback. I want to hear your feedback before I share my experience because I know you also have your own personal experience. Uh, Rahab Kinyanjui, uh, I can see you, Karibu Sana. Francis, my namesake at BAM Tours, I can see you. Francis is one of my uh, students at um, Digital for Africa or former students. I can see Catherine Korea. I want to hear your experience. I want you to engage me. I want to feel how you feel about uh, the digital platforms. How has been your experience? We will not go ahead until I see some feedback and questions from you guys. And uh, in the chat, you can always see my LinkedIn profile and uh, you can also see and learn more about uh, Nairobi Garage. So Betty Tutti, I've seen you. You've joined uh, Paul Tangara, Perez Odiambo from Fuzu, I can see you. But I want to hear your feedback. Type your feedback before we start uh, this conversation. I, I have my own experience. I believe you also have your own experience and I want to understand your experience. Does it align with what I'm hearing from businesses, you know, from SMEs, from uh, marketing professionals? I can see Perez says, when I started digital marketing, it wasn't easy with social media mostly. I thought uh, it is all about posting content and going away. But with time, I realized social media marketing entails more than just posting content and leaving. But over time, I've learned the basics, uh, but still want to know more, especially on conversion. And that's the conversation we'll be having today, Paris. So Betty Mwangi says, I prefer organic marketing to buying ads. Well, that's an interesting perspective. Um, Marcy, I can see you're typing. I'm expecting your exp to hear your experience. Um, as you type, let me start looking at what we will be covering today. Uh, Kiama, Barbara, I can see you. At the beginning, it was frustrating, but I learned you have to be consistent in your marketing and get leads to convert. So those are three experiences from Perez, from Betty, and from Barbara. So today we look at one of the things that I've learned. As I've said, I want to learn my own, ex I want to share with you my own personal experience. It turns out there has been a lot of overemphasis on technology or platforms. And we forget that human beings have not changed. We haven't changed. There is a psychology of buying. There is a reason why people make purchases or buy, you know. So we'll be looking at the psychology of buying. Uh, uh, secondly, we look at the importance of targeting, targeting the right customers. And thirdly, we will be looking at how can we increase our conversion. So those are the three things we'll be looking at today. 
And as I have said, the most engaged participant in this uh, uh, webinar will get a free audit report. We look at your social media, we look at your website, we look at your ads and give you feedback on the gaps that you have. But only one person will emerge as a winner. Not everyone, of course, we have to have the winner. So let's look at the psychology of buying because we can focus on Facebook as a channel and we forget Facebook is just a technology platform. You have to understand how the human brain works, how information is processed, how do we process information and make decisions to make purchases. So that's a very, very fundamental thing because if you are just obsessed with technology or Facebook or email or uh, YouTube and forget the science behind people making purchasing decisions, you will have lost it. So, and the question I have, the second question I have um, for us today, when was the last time you made uh, a purchase online? It could be a service, maybe you paid for a software, or a software or you paid for a product. Uh, maybe you bought something on Jumia or any other platform. How was that experience? Uh, you know, when was it? You know, is it recent? Is it last month? Is it three months ago? Is it last year? Or have you ever made a purchase online? And how was that experience? Because we may be obsessed with technology platforms and forget that marketing is an experience. Marketing is a process. Marketing is a journey that starts from somewhere. And the truth is, when the journey starts, not everyone who will start that journey will end up in a purchase, in making a transaction. Someone may start the, the process of looking for, let's say you are looking for a carpet for your house, or you are buying a, a sofa set, you're buying um, some furniture in your house. Where will that journey be? Where will it start? It can start online, it can start offline. You know, it can start online and end off, offline. It can start offline and end online. But a lot of people who start their marketing journey, it never ends into a transaction. So I want to hear what is your feedback? When was the last time you made a purchase? Massimo Doka says, uh, Facebook ads seem to be working better in terms of lead generation for the sales team. Of course, that's uh, in response to the first question. Nadia Hamisi, I can see you. Thank you, Malimu. I think it depends on the platforms for running uh, ads for clients. Have been somewhat successful, especially on Facebook. I want to hear, Rehab, I can see you're typing. When was the last time you made a purchase online? When, you, when I ask students or when I ask business people, when was the last time you made a transaction online? Or when you made a purchase? They think only about buying a product, a physical product. It could be a service you paid for. Personally, um, I pay for QuickBooks every month. Uh, you know, we use uh, QuickBooks accounting every month. So that means I always do a transaction for the last uh, many years since uh, Digital for Africa has been in existence. So we do transactions every month. Maureen says, yesterday I made a transaction from Global. Uh, that's, in yeah, that's interesting. Um, Perez says, I made a purchase last evening on Uber Eats. Wow. So even using a taxi and you pay on the app, you know, whether it is um, uh, bonds or whether it is Uber, that's a, an online transaction that took place. Rahab says the last time was on Instagram, I bought a pair of jeans. Wow, that's interesting, Rahab. I want to know who, which is that company that is selling uh, those quality pair of jeans. I do transaction three or four times a week, Betty Mwangi says, that's interesting. So I can see a lot of us actually, when I, in fact, I learned that when I ask people, when was the last time you made a purchase? It's different from when I tell someone, when was the last time you paid for anything online? Even through M-Pesa, you paid for something online and someone delivered it or that service was uh, given to you. Maureen says, I paid for schools, uh, school labeling items through Facebook. Interesting. LM says, I buy things online every month. That is a good experience. So um, let's go to another conversation. Uh, to look at why people buy. Today we'll be looking at how to increase conversions, but the truth is, why do people buy online? I want to tell you it is because of three, two factors. There could be many other factors, but I can categorize them into two uh, largely. One is because of trust. Someone is asking themselves, uh, if I buy online, can I trust this business to deliver what they have promised? That's a fundamental question. Can I trust this organization? Can I trust the item that will be delivered will be of high quality? 
you know, will I get value for money? Will I pay for something and get value from it? That's so trust is one of the biggest drivers or motivators of people uh, buying online. Of course, number two is um, the reason why people uh, don't buy is because of friction. And friction may mean a lot of things to many people because, as I said earlier, uh, buying online is a process, is a journey. It has a lot of steps uh, and a lot of, uh, you know, friction on online is related to the website experience. Sometimes there's a time I remember I went to the Naivas platform. Someone had told me Naivas has a very good anti-mosquito, um, uh, you know, product. You know, you put it on a socket and it doesn't affect you in terms of your breathing, it doesn't smell, but it is very uh, strong to, uh, you know, repel mosquitoes. So I went online on the Naivas platform and I tried to make a purchase online. I even called, I sent an email and it never happened. So I had to physically go online. And that's an example of friction on the website. As in the problem, the website is not working well or the payment method is not the one that I have. Maybe they want a visa or a MasterCard, but I want to pay by Mpesa. So that can affect the online buying experience. If you're selling a product online, don't just think about your product. Just don't just be obsessed with the product. You, without asking yourself, how can I enable a customer who wants to buy to be able to buy? Have I provided enough payment options for someone to make a purchase? There are people who don't believe that they should pay via Mpesa. Have you provided another technology? Visa, Mastercard, PayPal, uh, you know, PesaPal. They are all manner of payment platforms. There is also the question about delivery, the delivery experience, you know. If I buy online, who will deliver the product? How will it be delivered? And this is now us asking ourselves, what can we do to remove that friction? Because I remember we did a campaign for a brand, I don't want to mention, is our client. We did a massive online campaign um, for a retail brand. They were introducing a new product in the market. The website, we created a website. We did uh, content on social media. We created ads and then customers started asking, how can the product be, be delivered to me? And then the, the company or our client was saying, oh, tell them to look for our sales rep, you know, give them this number to call our sales rep in this location. And we could tell that this campaign will be affected because of the delivery experience. If you don't have a smoothless, uh, frictionless experience, your sales will be affected and you will be saying, oh, it is Facebook. Oh, it is a uh, YouTube that is a problem or it is my ads that are not working, but I want to buy. I have seen, uh, I want to buy, yes, I have paid, but you have a problem delivery. The people, customer are also concerned about uh, return, the return policy. If I pay, for example, if it is something that I need to fix, if it is a jacket or a shoe, if I pay for it, how will the experience of maybe I don't like the color, the size, the jacket is not fitting me, the size is so tight or something like that. Do you have a return policy? Have you stated your return policy on your social media? Have you made it uh, transparent, uh, you know, and you know, make it clear, provide a link to your return policy. If you look at the leading e-commerce platforms uh, in the world, you know, if you talk about Amazon or Jumia or uh, AliExpress, they have a landing page where they talk about, this is a process. If you don't like our product, this is how you can return it. You know, if you are paid, you, you just tell us that you didn't like the size or the quality and we will give you another product. So that's very, very important. It's part of removing friction and building trust. There's the issue of, of course, of if you don't have sufficient information, someone is struggling to understand, what, are you, what is this company selling? The information is not sufficient, it's not compelling, it's not uh, relevant. So very, very important. And of course, there's the issue of fake products. Let me hear uh, what you guys have said. Jesse says, the after sale experience will determine who stays and who doesn't. That's the truth. We may be focused on, and this is something I really want us to get, that buying, as I said, is a journey. There is a before the buying process, before the buying, which is the marketing and the content and the interaction, and then the sales and the after the sales experience. I have seen your product. I have paid for it. How do you support me beyond that? Can I return the product or if it, if, it, if, it, if it doesn't function, can it be returned? So all, that, all those are very, very important aspects of uh, you know, building trust and helping your conversions to increase. 
I have seen Karen Mugoni say, I have had two disappointing experiences with Jumia, so I saw off it has in. She didn't like the experience uh, buying from Jumia. Maybe the quality was not good, or they didn't have a good return policy, or the delivery was taking forever. Uh, those are very interesting uh, uh, feedback. So let's move to the third question, which I want us to respond to. Remember, there is a free giveaway we are giving. We'll give um, the most active, and I have two judges here. Uh, I, I will not be the one making the decision. I have two competent uh, judges, Bridget uh, is here from Nairobi Garage and Anita from Digital for Africa. They will give me the most engaged person who will get a giveaway from Digital for Africa. So I want to see your feedback. So this is the question. Um, why did you buy the product? Why did you, what drove you to buy the product? What was the motivator? What was the trigger? You know, why did you buy the product? I want to see your experience. Uh, Peres says, I had a terrible experience with Bold. I deleted the app. Well, we've had uh, that brand that has been mentioned by Peres being in trouble with uh, customers. Uh, we are not here to attack any brand, but we're just here to learn what we, uh, we can do to improve the buying experience, the online buying experience. Sharon Amondi says, I have, however, uh, bought several times from individuals, small shops on Instagram and IG, and I love the experience. Wow, it turns out even small business owners, SMEs, and uh, you know, small businesses have better experiences in terms of delivery and payment and efficiency uh, more than the big brands. I've seen uh, Rehab uh, says, I've also had two bad experiences with that brand, that e-commerce platform. Uh, called Jumia, I don't trust them so much. Karen says, I've had two disappointing experiences with Jumia, where I had read that. Who else has said something interesting? Uh, Nadia Hamisi says, I always look at the product reviews. Wow, that's interesting. Reviews before buying any product, very, very fascinating. Catherine says, it was significant, significantly cheaper than buying from a physical shop. Those are good uh, experiences. So let's look at the reason why people buy. As I had said, trust. People buy with all factors being equal. Assuming we have five companies selling the same product or offering the same service, but there is one company, I know someone who works there, I'm more likely to buy from them because of trust. It turns out, and this is some, something that someone has said, selling online, demands a higher level of trust than the physical world. That is very true. Uh, you know, if you're selling a product online, it is much more harder for you to sell online than the physical world. Because the physical world, there's a lot of trust. You can touch the product, you can feel it, you can smell it if it's a perfume, you can fit it if it's a jacket. If it is a car, you can enter into the car and drive and test drive and see how it uh, feels. But selling online, I'm only seeing pictures, so I don't know whether the photos I'm seeing are actually what I'll get. So that's very, very important. So that means uh, any one of us, and from my experience, and let me make this public, selling a product is much easier than selling a service. Let me repeat that. If you're selling a product, you're selling a physical product like a phone, a Samsung phone, uh, it's much easier to sell a product than selling a service. And I'll be explaining why. Remember, a service is not tangible value. You're saying you will offer me this service. It's not something that I will feel or touch. While a product is tangible, I can see the specs of the phone. You know, I can uh, go to the reviews and look at how people feel about the product, the ratings and the reviews. But for a service, I can't teach, I can't touch it, I can't feel it. So there is that aspect of the difficulty of selling online. That's number one, yes. Uh, but secondly, selling a service is much harder. So that means anyone selling a service, especially for companies targeting other companies, which means you are targeting owners of businesses, directors and CEOs, it's much more harder because you have to persuade the decision makers compared to it is a phone or it's a pen I'm buying, I just pay and it is delivered. In a, big, in a, in a B2B environment, a team has to sit down and make a determination on whether to buy the product or service from you. Uh, Kiyama says, for me, 
it was a service. I, need a, I needed a product delivered to a customer uh, in Gong as soon as possible. Bond service was the cheapest option. I could track the delivery and also uh, I, could, uh, I could call the client. So I think that's a very important aspect uh, Barbara is talking about, that I can track where the car is. I can track how long they will take. I can see um, they have arrived or they have not arrived. That's a very important experience. Number two, people buy based on recommendations. Uh, and that is why referrals and ratings matter a lot. And I will be sharing you a number of case studies uh, on the issue of recommendation. And that's why even you see, um, e you know, influencer marketing is a thing because someone who knows something, has much more knowledge about a product, comes and says, I have used this product and this is why you should consider buying it. So recommendations matter a lot. Recommendations also from friends and family and people who are subject matter experts can influence purchasing decisions. And this is a takeaway for you as a business owner. Um, have you been requesting customers to give you ratings and reviews on Facebook or LinkedIn and Google My Business? Because the truth is they will not just give you reviews out of nowhere. For example, Recently, we built uh, a website for a company called Adrian Kenya. This is uh, one of the providers of technology solutions, installing uh, fiber for Safaricom and others. We built their website the other day and we got, um, this was not even uh, something we asked them, they just did it. This is the, uh, the head of uh, communications at uh, Adrian Kenya who wrote a review and they, they, they told us on LinkedIn how they felt about the experience how we transform their business. This is how their website used to look like, and that's, this is how it is. So as a takeaway, as a business owner, as a marketing professional, please don't expect customers will give you ratings for free or just out of nowhere. Uh, you have to prompt them sometimes. You have to reach out to them and tell them, by the way, we really appreciate. This is what you can get if you give us a review or a rating on Facebook or LinkedIn or Google My Business. Uh, number three, people will buy if you are in the same community. We did an audit of our clients, and these are not the trainings that we do, the masterclass. These are uh, based on, um, uh, you know, what I could call the B2B transactions that we have been converting uh, in the recent past. I haven't mentioned any brand here, I've just put the, the industries they belong. You can see almost all of them converted, not because they saw us online, they converted because of we belong to a community you know and this is very fascinating or we are known by someone who is a decision maker so as much as social media platforms are very very important don't ignore relationships build relationships join communities join networks business networks where you can build trust because if you are a member of a community you earn trust by members that is why capsa is very important for you to join that is why it is important for you to join any professional body where business owners meet uh, or even marketing professional or sales professional or whichever community you join, uh, you can pay for it. Others are, most memberships are paid. You join and you access information within a community. So that's a fascinating trend or insight that I wanted to show you. As much as we have a website and it's a key tool for building trust, we still get a lot of customers from our community members. By the way, let me mention a lot of some of the companies we've got in here, they came to us because of our, uh, our presence or our partnership or as members of Nairobi Garage. We don't, we never joined Nairobi Garage just because of it, uh, for the sake of it. We joined because we felt this is a community and Nairobi Garage, the way they sell themselves, they are not just selling you an office, they are selling you access to community. You know, a lot of the customers here, they came to us because we are members of Nairobi Garage. And some of these bodies are no small business, uh, small business, they are big companies. And it, it tells you uh, relationships matter, community, joining a community can really give you a lot of conversions as much as online platforms are important. Number four, people will buy if they can save money. Um, the COVID pandemic has depleted cash flows in businesses and people are looking for deals, they are looking for discounts. They are looking for how they can save. So you cannot ignore the conversation about pricing. I'm not saying you charge the lowest in your industry. I'm just saying just because people are now more conscious about how they spend their money and they are looking for how to save, how to 
uh, get something for free or, uh, you know, a giveaway would be very, very important, a discount, a deal, you know. So look at your service, the way you price it and see what you can sell this and give this as a, as a, as a, as a, as an offer or as a giveaway, you know, to incentivize customers. And it is something that I really like talking about. Uh, and this is something I want to state very clearly. Almost everyone knows what you sell. Your customers, they follow you on Facebook. For example, Francis, people can see you, you do, uh, you provide uh, travel, uh, you know, you give people, you know, the ability to travel in a tourist, uh, different tourist destinations in Kenya. They see you do, you provide the travel experience. You know, you are in the travel industry. They know that you have cars, you have, tourist vans, you need to give them a reason to come to uh, your company compared to your competitor. So that's a very important point. Almost everyone sees, they can see what you sell, they can see the product you're selling, they know what you sell, but have you given them a reason? Give them a reason to buy, to, 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 to take that trip to Masai Mara. Um, we have a fourth question. How long did it take to have your product delivered? This is a poll, and I would want uh, Bridget to put this poll. You can go to the polls, and I want you, I can see the polls, uh, they are there. This is one of the polls I want you to respond to. How long did it take to have your product delivered? Because we can ignore, we can just focus on Facebook or Twitter, and then we forget marketing or the online, ex selling online is an experience. And you know, delivering the product, the speed of delivery is a competitive advantage. If the all factors being the same, if there are five companies selling the same product online, one takes 24 hours to deliver, another one takes 60 minutes, definitely I will go for 60 minutes. I, I have no time to wait for 24 hours or six hours, uh, you know, to have the product delivered. So give me the responses to the poll that uh, Bridget has put in the poll section. I can see Francis has said something I learned about asking satisfied, uh, satisfied customers uh, to write us uh, and give us reviews. I can see that. Uh, Nadia says, sometimes what you see is not what you get. So that means uh, companies are struggling to deliver the customer experience, the customer promise. You deliver, we, you, you promise we will deliver in 60 minutes and then you deliver six hours and you don't communicate why you delay. So that can uh, uh, break the trust as we have seen and heard from other people. Um, let's look at another important aspect. And this is something I was saying. People buy because of convenience. I can save time, I can save money. Uh, I want something now, not tomorrow. And that's why you can see anyone who is doing online commerce, e-commerce, even if they don't know, or even if you don't know, you are actually in the business of logistics. But selling a product, physical product online, you may not know, even if you don't know, actually you are in the logistics business and the speed of delivery will be your differentiation. So the way you deliver, the speed of delivery and how your product is delivered, it matters a lot. The presentation of the rider, will they deliver the pizza in full? I saw a video trending online where um, these companies that deliver, you know, some of them, I'm not saying all of them, uh, you know, someone was opening whatever was being delivered and eating section of it, and then they put it back and then they deliver. That can affect the, the trust. That will definitely ruin the trust and the relationship and customers will never come back. So if you want to sell online, especially for physical products, you have to get online delivery right. Um, let's look at the targeting. Let's go to the targeting because this is a very, very important aspect. And when you talk about targeting the right customers, I will be going to Facebook and Google Ads to show you some of the areas you need to be paying attention to. And before we do that, I have another question. Question five, Esther is selling a pizza on Facebook. Here is a question. Her bakery is located in Westland, Nairobi. Who should she target? A, people living in Kenya, B, people living within 10 kilometers from Westlands, C, people living in major towns and cities in Kenya. What are your responses? Um, I would like to look at the answers in the poll, uh, the, the answers, the, the answers. I would like to uh, get your answers. You know, how long will it take? Uh, not how long, but who should she target? Um, 
Bridget put that question as well in the poll. I would like to see the responses because this is a multiple answered question. Um, so this is very, very, very important. I'd like to see that. The answers, because I know there are people who may be doing the uh, wrong targeting. Allow me to share my screen for a while so that uh, I can explain this experience. Very, very important. Um, if I have an, a campaign I'm running, remember this is Facebook, the ads platform. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with Facebook advertising, you need to know that uh, Facebook has a very powerful platform called Call the ads manager. You just need to go to uh, business.facebook.com slash ads manager and you can access the advertising platform where you can set up campaigns. So I'd like to show you, um, other than budgets and uh, the start date and the end date, there is a very important conversation here about the location. I see a lot of people making a mistake. If you're selling a pizza and you're selling it online and under the targeting the location, you're choosing Kenya as a location. How will you deliver a product if you get a customer who is saying they are located in Lodwa, they are located in Marshall, they are located in Kisumu and you are in Nairobi in Westland. How will you deliver the product? What time will the pizza arrive in Eldoret or in Mombasa? You should ask yourself those kind of questions. So here, what you sell matters a lot. And you need to really narrow your location targeting so that you are not talking to the whole of Kenya. You are talking to people within a specific location. For example, if you're selling a product that can only be delivered physically in Kenya and you're targeting the whole of East Africa, then you're wasting your budget. So Facebook allows you, you can choose a very specific location. So you can remove Kenya and you can go specifically and target um, a specific location, <clears throat> you can come here and choose the location you're targeting and say, I want to target people who are actually in Westlands, Nairobi, not the whole of Nairobi. I'm talking about uh, Westlands, Nairobi. So Facebook allows you and it can even allow you specific areas within uh, Westlands. So you can choose um, even the distance, how long from Consolata Shrine in Westlands, how long? Are you talking about 80 kilometers, 10 kilometers, five kilometers? So don't waste your budget, but targeting a very massive audience. And yet logistically, you can only deliver your product within a specific location. So that's a very, very important aspect. Google also, Google Ads also, um, if you can see my screen, it's very, very important. Under settings, this is the Google Ads platform. You can choose location. And you can specify the specific location that you want to target. Definitely, you cannot be targeting the whole of Kenya if you're selling a pizza. It has to be a very specific location within um, the place where you are located. You know, uh, you cannot be talk talking about targeting the whole of East Africa and you're selling a pizza in Westlands. You have to be very, very specific. So if I say, for example, I'm targeting Nairobi CBD, maybe I run a, a, a business I'm, uh, within Nairobi CBD. I can choose, yes, Nairobi CBD, yes, but um, not just Nairobi CBD. I could be very specific in terms of how far from Nairobi CBD. Google Ads allows you to do that. So these are very important considerations that you need to pay attention so that you aren't targeting a massive location and waste your advertising budget. Um, it will affect your conversions and all that. So let me go back to the presentation. So location targeting is very, very important. Uh, I will be looking at the responses you've given in the polls. I would like to see the answers that you're giving so that I can see whether uh, we are together. Uh, I want to tell you a small experience I had with the global. By the way, global started in a very funny way in Westlands here in Nairobi. Uh, everyone was not taking them seriously, but now they have become a dominant uh, logistics and delivery company. They are selling almost, almost everything and they are built partnerships with uh, different uh, brands. Uh, I was really surprised to see 
uh, they were targeting me at a very convenient time. Um, so, so the time.
Sorry about that, guys. Um, technology fails when we need it to work. Uh, let me know on your. Let me know if you can uh, see and me. Uh, if you can hear and see me. Yeah. Okay. So I had asked a question. I have generated a thousand leads, but only uh, ten have become customers. What is my conver my conversion rate? I am looking to get your answers. Uh, Salome Njogu, I can see you. Uh, we are back. Maureen Karugu, uh, Francis, I can see you back. Apologies, we are still in Africa where internet sometimes can fail us at the most critical hour. So, um, a very important point I wanted us to bring uh, to attention. We need to give people a reason to trust what we are saying online. We need to build social proof. We need to give them what you call the trust signals to show them the trust signals. You can get them from testimonials. You can showcase certifications. You can showcase uh, awards or ratings and reviews on your websites, on your digital marketing platforms. When you're sending an email, instead of just saying, this is our offer, show me why I should pay attention. Uh, do you have any credibility? Uh, through certifications, if it's an industry that is highly regulated, what awards do you have? What testimonials do you have? Give me something compelling that can make me uh, to pay attention. Um, secondly, I have been looking at the digital platforms uh, for a while. I would encourage us to look at uh, Optica East Africa, their digital platforms, their website, the look and feel of their website. Everything is perfect. Um, I'll really encourage you to look at it. Sound is lost again. Enable me to participate. No, no, it's my internet. They're saying they can't hear me. I can see even my mic is off. Ask me to participate again. I can see my mic here is off. Okay, guys can hear you, but I saw um, Helena knew still no sound. Uh, everyone can hear me for now. I was saying that we should look at um, the digital platforms by Optica East Africa. I've been looking at their website. Um, I've been looking at their social media. They're doing a great job. We can learn from the best. I personally believe they're doing a great job. They have dominated this market. If you look at the imagery that they're using to sell their products, uh, the visuals are very appealing and memorable. Uh, you know, the quality of their products. Uh, I have also used their products. Uh, someone who uses glasses. Uh, look at their Facebook as well. Look at their ratings and reviews. And I will introduce you to a tool that's very interesting uh, called Facebook Ad Library. If you feel you have a competitor and um, you are wondering what are they doing uh, in terms of advertising, you can always go to facebook.com slash ad library or just search for Facebook Ad Library. Uh, Come here and choose all ads and enter the name of your competitor or a company that you want to see. How are they doing uh, their ads? Because as much as we can grow organically, we cannot ignore advertising. You can see this is uh, Optica East Africa. The ads that they are creating, the campaigns that they are doing, you can see all of them here. Uh, I personally uh, pay attention to what people are doing. You can see their visuals. Uh, the copywriting, the designs. This is how do you do social media in my view. You can look at the look and feel of their social media ads and you can see any ad by the way. This tool allows you to see even how much they're spending uh, and the targeting options that they have created. You can even ask Facebook uh, to, give me a re to give you a reason why uh, they are targeting you on a specific campaign. So uh, uh, Facebook ad library is a tool that uh, can help you to look at what your competitors are doing and learn from them. 
uh, in terms of their website and everything they're doing, I personally feel they're doing a great job. Uh, back to our presentation. I had talked about providing sufficient information about what your product is about. And I will encourage you to look at Sheldrick uh, Wildlife Trust. Their social media, they give a lot of context. They do wildlife, uh, you know, protecting animals, wildlife conservancy. And, you know, they look for animals that have been mistreated. They take care of them. There's a lot of poaching in Kenya, especially in the Savo National Park. So they do a lot of campaigns, but the way they win their customers is to give a lot of information about what is happening. The background, they take photos, they tell stories that are so relevant and a lot of people engage and contribute to their courses. So this is an example. In my view, when you see your online marketing is not working, a lot of times you can look at how are you communicating, the content, the information you share, is it sufficient, you know? So let's not blame the website or Facebook. Let's look at also the communication. How are we communicating? Sheldrick uh, Wild Trust, Wild, Wildlife Trust, they have done a great job uh, at communicating the visuals that they use, the, the copywriting skills of a uh, social media person who runs that account, they're just good. They're just getting it right. Mm -hmm. Another brand that has been doing a great job is Centronomy. Uh, they do trainings on uh, you know, saving money and entrepreneurship. If you look at how they do, they have, before they tell you to come for their classes, they encourage you to join a free open day. They give you a reason to pay attention. If you have not built trust with them, you just need to open, to go for an open day and you hear some of the speakers, some of the testimonials, some of the influencers they, they are working with. You listen to them and you will be given a reason. You will have a reason to join uh, whatever they are providing. So they're doing a great job at uh, building trust and giving people a reason, uh, you know, a taste of what they will get before they join. Instead of using one banner in Facebook, I would encourage us to use videos or multiple images. But the experience I have with this has been that if you are doing a lead generation campaign and you do carousels, you use carousels instead of one image or one banner, the cost per lead goes down. You know, Facebook charges you less if you have a very compelling video, if you have a multiple of photos or images or videos that someone can scroll before they buy from you. Um, this applies to Facebook uh, and even Instagram. So if you have Instagram ads, ensure you have carousels, uh, create videos, you will, you will be charged less for every uh, lead that you generate on that channel. Um, I've also been looking at what other brands are doing, especially SMEs, there is this brand very, very, uh, very new I saw and I want to encourage us to consider using Reels if you are in Insta on Instagram and you're selling fashion and beauty products, something that requires a lot of visuals. I have been seeing uh, this brand uh, on the screen right now. They're doing a great job in terms of using conversation and very emotional content that is entertaining sometimes. And people are captivated by their audience. Pay attention to this brand. Their reels are doing very well, but generally reels are doing very well because they are very new. Reels, for those of us who don't know, these are short video clips. Uh, the new platform or a new placement, ad placement that uh, Facebook has introduced that allows you to do a video of up to 60 seconds. You can do 15 seconds, you can do uh, 30 seconds, but they have now extended. You can do a video all the way to 60 seconds. Uh, reels, and the beauty about reels is that they can be seen by anyone in the world. The discovery of reels is much higher compared to the normal posts, the normal stories that you tell. So I would encourage, if you're running an ad on Facebook or Instagram, under placements, you should go and set the, you should go and set the, the reels as an option. Um, when it comes to Google Ads, I would also encourage us um, to consider adding keywords in your headlines. Uh, and descriptions. If you are selling land, maybe in Gong, consider adding the word land in Gong in your headline or land in Gong in your description as part of the copywriting and messaging. So the headlines, 
if they have keywords, this is not only on Google Ads, but also in terms of SEO value, if you are writing a blog article, if you are uploading a video on YouTube, if you are creating a post uh, on Instagram, when you use keywords, you are increasing the likelihood of increasing conversions. Uh, GSC says uh, bold colors uh, perform better, that is true. Strong imagery can increase uh, your conversions as well. Uh, someone says, Kiyama says you can't hear me. Let me know whether guys can hear me. Uh, if you're hearing me, let me know so that I can proceed. Okay. Perez is okay with my audio. I did a, a small thing with a client the other day. She told me, Francis, you know what? You're talking about websites. I don't have a website. You're talking about having a YouTube channel. I don't have a YouTube channel. I told her, by the way, don't be worried. Even on your Facebook, if you use keywords in the description, uh, if you use keywords in your profile, it will increase the discovery of your page. It will increase the discovery of your content. As I did an audit, uh, we did it with her. We searched for pizza in, uh, in Akuru and we discovered some of the top pages on this uh, product or in this category, they are actually Facebook pages, they are not websites. And the only thing they have is that they have used keywords in the descriptions of their profiles and they have used keywords in the descriptions of their, uh, in their pro, in the, in the description of their, the caption, the image caption. The image uh, caption can really uh, increase the conversions. So don't just say, oh, I don't have a website. If you have Instagram, if you have Facebook, if you have LinkedIn, consider looking at that. I will give you an example from my own personal experience because I do get a lot of clients on Twitter myself and even LinkedIn. And it has been because um, whatever I teach or I share with the clients, I also practice the same. If you look at my profile on Twitter, where I'm very active, you can see how I position myself. Uh, you know, I, I, I mention the things that I do, SEO, Google Ads, Facebook Ads. And when you go to Google, uh, to Twitter and search for something like uh, Google Ads, maybe you don't know me and you're looking for someone who can help you to do Google Ads, uh, and you search for people, you will find I am there, you know. You go to the same platform and search for something like Twitter ads. And you are looking for people, you can see I'm appearing the first there, even above Twitter ads, API, and many others. It is because of how I have positioned myself, how I have described myself. So I tell my students a lot of times that social media or technology is not a human being. It is a software. Uh, it is piece of code. It doesn't understand context until you give it context. So if you describe yourself in great detail on LinkedIn, uh, the other day we were looking for, uh, there's a time we were hiring a digital marketer and we went online, even a web designer. We went on LinkedIn and searched for web developers in Kenya and we found uh, a person and we hired him based on how he had described him on LinkedIn. So don't ignore the small details, how you describe yourself on a digital platform. It can increase the discovery of your, your profile, your business and all that. When it comes to platforms like Google, adding negative keywords can increase conversions as well. For example, if you're selling land, you are not dealing with the houses, you're selling land. Uh, negative keywords can filter off the bad traffic that you don't want to attract. If you're selling land, for example, uh, something like a bedroom, four bedroom house or three bedroom house, someone is looking for rent, a rental house will not be buying a piece of land. The conversion rate will be very, very low. But if you focus on uh, keywords related to land rather than villas and townhouses, you can increase the probability of, of converting uh, clients. I can see Francis says, I agree with you on using keywords on Facebook. I have started using it. It's performing very well organically. So the moment you start using keywords in how you describe yourself, you will get people inquiring directly and asking you some important questions. 
related to your business, as in the organic growth of your business is likely to happen. On Google Ads, uh, adding extensions can give context to your ads. And this is an example. I have picked a screenshot of a business that has added uh, extensions in their Google Ads. Extensions is just more meaning to your ads, like providing where you are located, a mobile number, or even cycling extensions, as you can see, champagne, white wine, red wine, special offers. All these are actually um, adding meaning to the ads and it make it easier for someone to make a decision. And the campaign settings on Google as well, ensure you remove these two options, search network and display network. They can help you reach more people, but the conversions are very low. So if you are trying to increase the conversion rate of your Google search ads, ensure you disable search network because and display networks because they waste your budgets. And if you are struggling to come up with Google ads uh, or Facebook ads, you can always uh, reach out to me and I can help you. We had already talked about this. Save your budget, avoid targeting the whole of Kenya. And of course, it depends on what you're selling. If you're selling a product that can be consumed by anyone in Kenya, well and good. But if you're selling a pizza in Westland, there's no way you can be selling someone in Marsabit. There's no way they're gonna uh, come for your service. I want to conclude today's conversation by saying the following, that it turns out no matter how much you try to track the performance of your ads, um, you will never nail the, 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 the attribution 100% unless you ask a customer. You need to ask your customers, how did you learn about us? If someone calls you, find out, how did you learn about us? Did you hear about us from someone or you found us online? A lot of times the people who come for a masterclass, they discover us through our website or Facebook and Instagram, or a lot of them are referred by other people. So have this kind of a attribution internally where you ask customers, uh, how did you learn about us? Did you hear from, uh, from someone or did you learn through an agent if you're a real estate company? So that can really increase um, you know, the attribution, the ability for you to track how, what is working and what is not working. So I want to also talk about, encourage you to, we have a masterclass that is coming as Digital for Africa. We have always done this face to face, but we moved it online. Now it is taking two weeks. Um, and um, we have one coming in November uh, 8th to 19th. So if you have found this conversation interesting and you are interested, interested in learning these things, because I have just to summarize a lot of my experience in a very short time, uh, you can join us and you can learn not just from me, but from other teachers who I work with. Uh, and we can support you. We provide support and mentorship for 30 days for anyone who joins our class. And a lot of people who have joined here, I have seen some of them have uh, gone through our program. If you haven't, I would encourage you to join. So the last point I had to talk about today before I look at some of the feedback you've written, if you are selling anything online, even if you don't know, remember you are in the business of building trust and removing friction. And every day you should be asking yourself, what type of content are we creating today to build trust? What, are, what evidence are we showing to our customers? Um, and what are the challenges our customers are going through to convert? And if you look at a very frequently asked question or a feedback, it means you need to improve it. It could be a payment issue. It could be people cannot, they are calling your line and no one is speaking. That can affect the conversion rates. So let's look at some of the questions and the feedback that you have before we wind out. Salome said, um, uh, if you wanted the questions, I think the questions have been posted. Um, I want to see some of the feedback. Let me also hear what you think about the class today, the free webinar today. Francis says, uh, the masterclass was my breakthrough in marketing on social media. I would highly recommend it to everyone. Thank you, Francis. Um, I would like to hear from others as well. If you have questions based on to what we have learned today, let me know. And also, Anita, my colleague Anita and uh, Bridget should tell us who is one of the best and most active person that can get a giveaway from Digital for Africa. We will give an audit report 
Um, we will audit your social media, we look at your ads, we look at your website and give you a report. This is a report we charge a lot of money, uh, up to 65,000 shillings. But for you, who is going to be today's winner, we will give it for free. Michael, I can see you are typing. I'm waiting for your feedback. Salome has taken through, uh, has gone through our training. She feels that uh, they she needs to, she feels she can come to the class again. And the way it turns out, there are people who have attended our master class more than once. Whatever we taught three years ago, two years ago, that's very old. Digital marketing, even Google certification and Facebook certification is renewed every year. You cannot do a training two, three years and you say you are a Google certified. It is renewed every year. So you need to go back to class and learn what is new. Um, I have seen feedback as well from Perez. Thank you very much, Perez. Um, she's talking about algorithms and how it has changed the way we consume content. Uh, Perez is encouraging people who have not joined our masterclass to join. Michael Kiai says, I envisage exploring more on digital marketing, especially for services. Michael, reach out to me. I can uh, be available to have a conversation with you on how to build trust for service industry. As I said, selling a product much, is much easier compared to a service. How do you sell a product, uh, a service uh, online? That's a very, very important question. Uh, and I'm willing, Michael, to engage you. Um, I'm waiting for Anita and uh, Bridget to give me today's winner. Uh, and Maureen Kirimi also attended our training and uh, is saying that he, he would, she would recommend it. Maureen Kirimi, thank you very much for your feedback. Jason Dubu says um, the masterclass sounds well. The big idea about the masterclass is the support and mentorship where you come and sit down with me and uh, our trainers and we give you feedback, actionable and relevant feedback. We look at the content you're creating, we look at your website, we look at your email marketing, or sometimes you may be doing a wrong strategy and you are uh, blaming Facebook or uh, you're blaming Instagram. Those are just technology platforms. What strategy do you have for your business? Um, Bridget, can we learn or can we hear from you who has uh, been the most active person? Who should we give this uh, giveaway from Digital for Africa? Francis Kinyanjui has been the most active and congratulations Francis Kinyanjui. So Francis Kinyanjui, you have emerged as uh, the winner of today's conversation. Remember, I wanted it to be more of a conversation. And I apologize for the trouble with the internet, but I believe this presentation, if you need it, uh, it can be sent to you by uh, Bridget from Nairobi Garage. She will send it to you. You can get my contacts there and also reach out to me. Let's have this conversation. So Francis, uh, expect a call from me or from Anita, my colleague, so that I can sit down with you and have uh, some time to audit your website and give you feedback on what is working, what is not working, on where area, the areas that you can improve. Thank you very much. Bridget, can you come? Um, okay, there was a question. I haven't seen any questions so far. Uh, there's a question for a budding entrepreneur from Simon Aska. There's a question from uh, Simone, for a budding entrepreneur, would you recommend that we take an ad creation ourselves or hire an expert to do it? Depending on your business, I would really encourage you to build capacity internally. <clears throat> there are some functions of your marketing that you can outsource, but there are some core functions of your business that you cannot outsource. Like managing your Facebook, for example, well, you can outsource it if you have a budget, but honestly, I would prefer you have some internal capacity. Have someone internally who can go to Canva and create a post or who can go online and create a content calendar and respond to customers. Uh, but if you have a budget, there's nothing wrong in getting a company or a freelancer who can help you uh, manage your social media. So I cannot see any other question. Thank you very much. I'll allow Bridget Nyaga from the Aerobic Garage to come. Um, and actually wind up this session. Thank you very much and see you online.
Wow, what a wonderful and informative session we had there. Thank you so much, Francis, for taking us through this very informative and detailed session. I am certain each of us has taken away golden tips on creating brilliant and effective uh, online ads, should you be uh, a person already in business or thinking of starting a business. Uh, thank you for your active engagement, all participants. Uh, we appreciate your engagement and glad that you all gained a lot from this session. Francis has kindly offered uh, the best, the most active uh, participant in this session, a free audit, audit for their social media, ads and websites, and a one hour session free uh, with the Digital for Africa experts. Uh, Nairobi Garage is also extending uh, to each of you a free day pass to work at any of our four locations. You will have more details on this and more uh, in your emails by the end of the day today. Asante Sana, uh, see you next Tuesday.